Okay, we're recording now. Um, hello, uh, my, my name is Matthew, and this is another Zoom chat, and this one's a little bit experimental. I am talking with Michaela, and we've never met before. We've never talked. <laughs> uh, we, we just had a, a minute uh, of introductions, um, but we're just going to talk about books. So, um, Michaela, would you like to introduce yourself or say hello? Yes. So, hi guys. I'm Michaela. I actually have a bookstagram at Michaela Reads, and really two days ago, I made a YouTube channel, which is also at Michaela Reads, where I plan on talking about books. But I'm a little nervous with the whole booktube journey and everything, and really what I'm going to talk about and how to do book reviews and all that. So that's just a work in progress, but I'm happy to join all of you guys on Matthew's channel. And thanks so much for having me, Matthew. That's, uh, that's we'll all. Get into it, I guess. Have you made a video yet? Uh, yes, I have one video up. It's about two minutes, roughly. Um, okay. It's a library book haul. <laughs> um, so what are, you, what are you reading right now? So right now, I actually have my stack right here with <laughs> so the books that I'm reading are Girl in White Cotton and the alternative title is Burnt Sugar. It was long listed for the booker this year. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Then I'm also reading How to Be an Anti-Racist by Eber Max Kennedy. I'm actually about 62% into this one, but the subject matter is really heavy so I've kind of been taking it slow and then I guess I'll just add two more that I've gotten further into because you know how it is with us bookish people we're reading like a massive amount of books at once so I'm probably reading about nine at once right now <laughs> I don't want to take up too much time with that but I have here Moby Dick oh wow famous Herman Melville <laughs> I, <was talking> <laughs> I know Matt how are you liking Moby Sorry. Dick Oh, I've enjoyed it so far. There's some parts where I don't really fully understand what's going on, but Spark Notes has come in handy for that. And I've also been watching um, some booktubers who have reviewed Moby Dick. And I think there's even a guy on here. Uh, we'll have to look up his channel, but and add him in the comments. But um, he does like sections of Moby Dick and then kind of talks about the literary analysis on that. I think that might be uh, Ami's channel. I, Ivan, uh, Ivan's Nightmare. Yes, that was, that's right. Yeah, he's great. Uh, he's awesome. What, what else do you have? So here I have Middlemarch by George Eliot, which was a part of the Middlemarch along um, with Claire Fendi, Fendi, who has a YouTube channel as well. And uh, I got maybe into book three, and kind of stopped reading it for a while because <laughs> I wasn't really jiving with Middlemarch. So, yeah. It seems like you have a pretty wide spectrum of interests. I mean, those are uh, brand new books that are coming out, um, books that are on pretty, pretty current affairs, heavy hitter classics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. I read a wide range of things and just recently, um, within the last year, I've been getting into a lot of classics because I feel like I've read the typical books, like you have your The Great Gatsby, The Scarlet Letter, The Bell Jar, things like that. We read in high school, but they didn't, um, and then even, what is it, The Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, that was also one I read in high school, but we never touched on the real thick classics like Moby Dick or Middlemarch. So I have that on my shelf as well as I'm looking at my shelf right now, Don Quixote, which I'm very excited to read hopefully next year. So yeah, there's a lot that I'm um, interested in. And Matthew, if you have any suggestions or anything or any comments about those, I'd love to hear them because I, know I really respect your reviews and thoughts on books. Uh, well, uh, Moby Dick and Middlemarch are two of my favorite novels. Um, it's, been, it's been quite some time. I mean, it could be 10 or 12 years since I've read Middlemarch, but um, I read, uh, I reread Moby Dick maybe last year. Um, and I, I just, I, I, I personally love it. Um, it can, it can feel um, heavy handed or the, 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 the wailing chapters can feel 
overbearing. Um, but I, I think as a whole, it, it elevates it. it it's, um, it's a book that is entirely self-contained as its own little world. Um, and, and then just as a, the writing itself, I just think is extraordinary. It's some of the most absolutely beautiful language uh, ever put to paper. Uh, for, for my money, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Because from the first page, I realized I'd never seen anything written like this. And I've read a wide range of books, so that was very surprising to me. And I can also see the influence on a lot of the reader, the authors that I read now on, like, Moby Dick on their writing. So that was also a pretty cool experience. But the whaling chapters, oh, <sighs> those are hard to get through. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, any humor in Moby Dick? Have you been times where you've been amused at all? Oh, yeah. The chapter, uh, the famous chapter with Q-Quag, um, where he figures out that he has to sleep with this random man. <laughs> that one was pretty hilarious. And then there's a few uh, that pop up with the ship captain, Ahab, I believe his name is. Yeah. Is that yeah. yeah, there's some hilarious parts there, too, so. Yeah. Well, what was that? That the first book you held up was um, long listed for the Man Booker. You said yes. Is that twenty twenty? Yes, this year. So it's um, it's actually released under the title Burnt Sugar in the UK, but this is the Indian copy. It was originally released in India, in, I believe two thousand eighteen. Uh, the author is Avni Doshi, but. It was pretty hard to find a copy in the U.S. because they're not releasing it until 2021. So a friend recommended a Amazon seller for this edition. Okay. What's it about? It's about, um, it's largely about memory. I'm not too far into it, probably about 70 pages, but um, there's a mother and she's going through Alzheimer's. So it's sort of the daughter's experience with that and dealing with um, the process of the mother forgetting and becoming her caregiver and things of that nature. It's really interesting and it's highly recommended by Katie Books here on Instagram. <laughs> he has a glaring review of this novel. And um, yeah, so we, we're doing, I actually was reading it with the well, I'm reading it with the Booker Boy Book Club, which Katie Books is hosting right now. So that, that's kind of what got me interested in this one because I'd never heard of this title. So yeah, I'd highly recommend it. You've been on. Uh, you have a you have an Instagram page where you're posting book stuff, and yeah. then you're on Goodreads, and I guess you do stuff on Goodreads. Mm -hmm. What made you um, just recently decide to want to have? Uh, a book channel was, was there um, one, one thing that changed for you or have you always been thinking about it or um, what, like, what, what were you thinking okay so as far as the book channel goes <laughs> a lot of my friends on bookstagram um, Kieran and Zim have been saying Michaela you need to review these books like these reviews are so awesome like you should start posting some on a uh, booktube <laughs> and just a couple days ago, I decided like um, I would post a video this week because I've recorded little like snippets of books that I've received in the mail. So I kind of uploaded one of those. But I think also the big difference with BookTube is that you have the opportunity to um, not only like meet people uh, that enjoy books, but actually like see each other face to face and like you can like meet up and chat about books that way, which I think Instagram doesn't really have that as much, if that makes sense. So I'm assuming that you like to talk, you like to talk about books uh, in conversation with your friends. Is that? Uh... I would say mm, that's a hard question because I don't have many friends that are voracious readers or even okay. like serious readers. So um it's tended to be uh, more of a personal thing for me and a personal journey. So it's not until just what, mm, I guess in like early March or April or late March, I would say when the quarantine happened that I decided that I would see what's going on with uh, talking about books on Instagram. And then from that, I learned about booktube. So it's been, okay. Yeah. Do you think, it's been a journey. 
do you, do you think these online communities have been a really healthy outlet then? Yeah. Yes, definitely. It's been a healthy outlet because <laughs> it's even allowed me, like my books, my TBR is packed with books from both BookTube and Bookstagram. So it's definitely been a healthy outlet. Maybe not healthy for my bank account, but <laughs> certainly a healthy outlet for my reading. Yeah. So yeah. What were and you, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, go on. Oh, what were you reading um, before BookTube, would you say? Like, has it changed your reading in any way, sir? Um, my, my reading habits have pretty much stayed the same. Um, in, in, in the sense that my, my tastes haven't really diverged. Right. But um, I, I've certainly uh, discovered and encountered a lot, uh, a much wider variety than I had otherwise. Um, so one, one example is um, so sometime earlier this year, I, I read Dune, which is mm -hmm. that uh, science fiction book. Yeah. And that's a relatively, um, it's not a new genre, but it, it's a genre that I don't read very much. So um, uh, he hearing a lot of people on, on BookTube talk about Dune and also the movie coming out uh, mm -hmm. made me want to uh, give it a shot. And um, like right now, like I want to find, um, I, I was just watching that interview with, um, Steve Donahue and uh, I can't remember her name, but uh, the channel is uh, the Bookish Knitter. Yeah, and they were talking about romance novels. Mm -hmm. and I was like, well, I could read a romance novel. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. It's it's amazing to me the way that this community like allows you to expand your reading taste. And not only that, but meet people that read the same thing. Well, not necessarily always the same, but similar books to you. So yeah. I love that it's so different and you can um, f find, find people that um, ha have their tastes and through, through conversation and discussion, um, they kind of lay out really good reasons. Um, yeah. for things you might not have otherwise um, g given the time to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because I think a big thing that impacts my current reading taste, like these two books here, Salvage the Bones and Men We Reap by Jasmine Ward, is um, I'd like to curate a reading library of um, primarily African-American literature. So I've started reading, um, I, oh, I have a big, <laughs> anyone that knows me personally knows, I have a big love for Toni Morrison's work. So I've collected all 11 of her fiction novels and I've read eight of them now. So that sparked my interest for reading more um, Black authors this year. And yeah, so. I read, you're not going to like this, but I, I read, uh, I think last year I read Beloved and I hated it. <laughs> See, funny thing, I actually hated Beloved when I read it. And I started reading it um, maybe mid-April. Time's a really hard thing for me to even like pinpoint right now because I've been home for so much time with quarantine. <laughs> but... I started reading Beloved and oh my gosh, like I disliked the way that the plot was organized and how it was bouncing back and forth. So I had to put it down for maybe two weeks and then I just picked it back up and like read all the way through so I could finish it. But whew, I don't think I'll be rereading that one. That's one Toni Morrison that I haven't really enjoyed. Um, what, what, but, what would be the Toni Morrison novel that you would recommend? What was your favorite one? Or or better yet, what, what, what do you think is the best introduction? Oh, this is a great question. So the best introduction to Toni Morrison, in my opinion, is The Bluest Eye, which is her very first novel. So say like, uh, if you read The Bluest Eye, you can see the progression of her writing um, as you go along in the publication order. So after that, I would recommend Paradise, which is one of her books that isn't really as well known, but it's about um, sort Better. of a, 
Is that her Sorry. second? It's actually maybe her fifth, I believe, somewhere around there. So it's a little further down the line. It's, yeah, it's about like a woman's convent. Um, it's like a group of church ladies and the way it starts, you know, Toni Morrison hits from the first page. So there is a group of men that come into the convent to kill the woman there. And it's a uh, non-chronological. So you go from that scene on the first chapter to learning about the woman's life slowly um, throughout the book. And then of course, in the last chapter is when she finally wraps it up and explains what really happened there. So that was a five-star read for me and probably one of my favorite Toni Morrison so far. So those two beloved, well, sorry, not beloved, <laughs> read if you want to, but Matthew and I didn't really like it. So you can take that how you'd like to. I'd say read all of her books, but my two favorite right now are um, Paradise and The Bluest Eye. So yeah. Um. So uh, I, I am curious about Goodreads. I've never, um, I've actually never been on it. I've never mm -hmm. used it, but from what I understand, it, it's basically um, like a, re a review aggregate. So it, you have like a page where you list the books that you've read and you talk about them. Um, what, what are the things that you like about Goodreads and then what don't you like about it? Okay, so what I really like about Goodreads is their reading challenge feature. So you can set um, a number of books that you'd like to read for the year. And then um, it tracks that as you go along with each book that you read, you insert it into um, your Goodreads. But I think what I don't like about Goodreads would have to be the fact that I feel like some reviews on Goodreads are a little skewed because they're getting books from publishers and feel like they have to write a positive review, if that makes sense. You've probably seen that a bit here on BookTube where if someone gets a book from a publisher, their opinion isn't really the most genuine. Um, but the way that I would summarize Goodreads in the easiest format is that it, I agree that it is a review catalog, but it's also um, a good way to track what you're reading and see what other people are reading as well. But there's, if you've heard about this, I'm not 100% sure, but there's a Goodreads alternative that came out due to the whole Amazon controversy. It's called The Storygraph. Right now they have a um, beta website and a, what is it called? It's essentially like a PWA, I think is the term, where there's an app made for it. Like you can add the, tab from your screen and put it as an app on your lock screen but it's not a um officially designated app because it's still going through the beta stages does that make sense um i don't know <laughs> <laughs> maybe someone will understand it but yeah it's a little complex but i would say just i would highly recommend a goodreads account though if you're looking into it or have any or if you have any reservations um so I'd in, be happy to help with that. In Goodreads, there's a there's a rating there's a star rating system. Um, mm -hmm. do, do you what, what what is your point of view like? Do you have like certain delineations of what makes a five star four star? Um, how do you see that? Like, is a three three star book like really not good, or is it above average? Um, or five star reads like super rare? Like, are there only like three five-star reads? See, I think I have a dip, like, I take this a bit different than most people with, where with Goodreads, uh, three and below is a book that I probably didn't really like, but I still felt like it justified me completing it. And then anything above a three means I absolutely love the book. A five is where I'd say, like, this is a book that I would definitely reread. It was amazing. Um, writing style was on point. <laughs> but a three about, is it? Sorry. Can, can you talk about uh, maybe one or two of your five star reads? Sure. What's it? Actually, okay. Pull up my good reads here. Let's see what I got. So, one of my five star reads is um, 
sorry, my Goodreads is kind of acting up. You know? So one of my five star reads is Nervous Conditions by Titi Dangaramba. Bad quality, like here. This one um, is a part of the, what is it called? This Mournable Body Trilogy, which I can actually get it. It's another book that's on the Booker long list. So since it was a part of a trilogy, I decided to read all three. Um, so yeah, this one, I feel like it was a five star because of the way that it tackled um, the African experience. Like it starts off with a character named Tambu and it sort of documents her life as she goes from um, a daughter in an impo impoverished family living on a corn farm to uh, moving in with her uncle in Rhodesia, which is, if you if you guys are a little familiar with Zimbabwean history, you might know this, but um, there were a lot of wars before Zimbabwe actually got their independence, so it was named Rhodesia before Zimbabwe. Um, so yeah, it goes into Tambu's story um, is the, in a pretty... Is the author from Zimbabwe? Yes, the, she is from okay. she is from Zimbabwe. So Titi Dangaremba, she's Zimbabwean, and she was okay. She I shouldn't be laughing about this, sorry. But she was arrested <laughs> in the recent protest of um, Zimbabwe. I think there was a bit of political strife and economic unrest, and they arrested her as soon as actually. I think it was within a couple days of her being nominated for the Booker 2020, she was arrested for um, her participation in the riot. So yeah, it's- <laughs> Or is it written in English? It's written in English, yeah. All right. Yeah, the first book was written actually 20 years ago, which is crazy. Oh. And it wasn't as publicized. So the book is actually what, where I found out about it. So yeah, it's a pretty interesting book. Um, <laughs> Your, about your YouTube channel. So what, what kind of what, what kind of plans do you have? Um, as far as like, so what, what are you interested in? Um, what kind of videos do you want to make? Um, th just things like that. All right. So right now I'm thinking I'll probably start with the tag videos first. Sure. So I've written down um, the booktube newbie tag and the small booktuber tag. So I might do those as my next videos. Okay. Um, and then as far as uh, content in general goes, I'm thinking that I'll do reviews. So probably go back on my catalog of books that I've read this year and review um, a few of my favorites or books that people might not have really known about because of their popular like the lack of popularity for them so yeah a lot of uh that is what I'm thinking so far but I would be happy to hear any advice you have on booktube uh videos or how you plan your videos or even if something as simple as editing that's something that I have no clue about right now so I'm, I'm probably not the best person to ask um <laughs> so I don't, I don't do any I, I I don't do any editing um I I, I I do everything on my phone and I had gotten like one of those like apps for editing um, and a few of my channels like certain things would happen where I would just like cut out a chunk but th there's no there's no intro music or I, I can't cut out the ums things like that um, I, I will say as a viewer um, I, I noticed that a lot of a lot of brand new YouTube channels will start with the book newbie tag. Yeah. Um, and the thing that I find kind of disappointing is when you find the channel, because it's very popular, so you, you'll find it right away. But when you find the channel with the content. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a bummer because then you're, you're hoping for more videos where they explain a bit more about their uh, preferences in the book to even be times, but then there isn't really much there. So right. yeah, I, it's definitely I, I, something. Um, when I started my channel, um, I, I was really unaware of booktube as a whole. 
-hmm. So for, for maybe like nine months, I, I was just sort of making videos in the dark. Um, and I, I think it was, in, in some ways, it was accidentally beneficial because when I, when I finally found out about a book newbie tag, and then I did it, um, I, I think um, the, the, the viewership that um, sees the tag video and then sees my channel, there's stuff to watch. Right. You have a back catalog um, so they can go back and kind of see what videos you've made previously. And I realized actually I was um, a couple weeks ago, I was going through your back catalog, Matthew, and I saw a lot of um, reviews first on your channel like the first nine months or so or so you did a lot of reviews so yeah what would you say was your favorite like book to review early on um actually um the, one of the one of the videos that I, I was really happy about was actually the trigger the donald trump jr book triggered um so it, it has nothing to do with the book but um it's it's maybe 10 or 12 minutes long where um but before i hit record I, I sort of collected my thoughts and then when i hit record i i was able to go through all of the points that i wanted to hit and i i just felt like i did a very good job um t just talking through like a, a whole long uh chain of thought um and then to, to a few of my other ones that I, I thought that I personally did a good job with um, was Madame Bovary uh, by Flaubert. Um, mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Like for me, what what I consider a good a good video is um, like kind of figuring out what I want to say and then hitting record um, and very like smoothly um, hitting hitting all the points that I, I wanted to. Um, I, I've done other reviews where, because um, I, I don't have any notes really, so th there there are times where I'll do a review and then a after I finish it or after I publish it, it like dawns on me that like I forgot some big thing like like I, oh, like. No. When, not that I did this, but like the feeling of reviewing Moby Dick and forgetting to bring up the whale. Like, mm, yeah, I get what you're saying. So it's like you're missing out on a lot of the, well, bigger points of the book when you do it on the fly. Yeah, uh, a, a, I mean, uh, for me, I, I I don't know why, but I, I, I feel, um, I feel comfortable having no planning. Like I'll, I'll just take a couple minutes. Um, a, a lot of the time I'll, I'll finish a book and then hit the record button. Wow. That's shocking to me because that, I think that's been one of my biggest fears with uh, booktube in general is just the amount of preparation that it would require for me to make a good review video and something where I'm not just like rambling the entire time. So it really like surprises me that you're able to um, make them so quick and actually like have concise thoughts and like really thought provoking um, ideas on the book that you just finished reading. So, yeah. I have, um, there's other booktubers, uh, some people I'm you know, very good friends with. Mm -hmm. And when I found out the amount of preparation that goes into one of their videos, like yeah. they are extremely well made and they're very thoughtful, but when you see the extent of it, it's like, holy cow, like, this is a mob. Yeah. So um, and then also, all the editing, like, you could spend hours editing the video. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes like an unpaid job at that point, because I think one of the other controversies of book two, which we, <laughs> we don't have to talk about, is the fact that um we're providing so much publicity for these book publishers but a lot of booktubers aren't really making money off of it there's very few people who are able to get sponsorships and like make this a living so yeah that's a very interesting thing 
that they put so much I, but I think it's amazing that people are willing to put so much time into it though I, I mean, it really just shows our love for books for, for, for me this is just a hobby uh it, yeah. it's something fun um and I, I don't I don't read too many not very often am I reading the newest books that are always coming out so mm-hmm. you know like uh this morning I finished reading Tender is the Night and I, I made a review for it. Um, but it's it's not like Fitzgerald needs any publicity. Right. <laughs> so how did you think that compared to The Great Gatsby? That's his book as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 I think The Great Gatsby is a superior novel. Um, and um I, I think there might have been editing issues like i i feel like it, it's maybe twice as long as the great gatsby and so if maybe it was condensed or something mm-hmm. uh I, I thought it was really good i, I thought it was really good but um so, sometimes if, if you look at the author's greatest work or one of their greatest works it, it can become an unfair benchmark to compare all of the other works to um, you know, uh, if you get one good book out of a person, that it's pretty good. Yeah, because it's hard to write a book in general. So, and I think, that, yeah, <laughs> I think uh, the Great Gatsby kind of like, in a way, the fact that it's so well known prevents people from reading his other works, like Tender is the Night or anything else that's in his back catalog. Because in high school, when I read The Great Gatsby, like, I just ended it there. I didn't even think about reading Tender Is the Night. And that's been, well, I'm actually uh, in my last semester of my undergrad right now in psychology. So that's been about three years now, roughly. And I haven't touched anything else by F. F. Scott Fitzgerald since then. So I think that's kind of a downside of reading um, The Greatest Work first. Where are we going? Uh, getting some beverages. <laughs> I completely forgot to um, get something to drink when I started this chat. <laughs> That's cool. um, so maybe we could wrap up a little bit. Um, yeah, sure. I think, um, uh, it was so, so nice to meet you. I, this has been fantastic. Uh, I'm going to look forward to uh, checking out your channel. Um, maybe after this, if you, if you want to send me uh, an email of any kind of links, like anything that you want me to put in the uh, description box so people can find you, I'll do that. Awesome. Um, and also, um, I'm still experimenting a little, but uh, I'll, I'll probably upload this on Monday because I need a computer and I don't have a working computer. So um, there'll be a little bit of time. Um, but do, do you have any concluding remarks? Uh, not much. Just, I would just say uh, follow me on Instagram at Michaela Reads. That's where I'm really the most active talking about books. So yeah. And then also just a massive thank you to Matthew for um being willing to chat with me here on zoom because this is like the first time i've done something like this with another book tube or book lover <laughs> in this community so yeah it's been pretty cool okay great yeah th- thank you I, ha- I had a great time uh and thank you for watching leave comments if you would like uh and that's mm-hmm. it thank you bye. yeah all right thanks bye matthew Thank you.